The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. So it's the last T Tuesday update of 2020. Can't come too soon. Uh, a quick update on the fiction, and then this is all going to be debugging in various flavors. Uh, uh, folks, remember uh, a year ago, November, I did NaNoWriMo. I wrote a bunch of words of science fiction novel, got about 35,000 words written, not all shown here. This NaNoWriMo, one of my goals for last November was to take a chunk of that, a specific chunk, it's kind of like chapter two, and boil it down to uh, something that could pass for a short story and try to actually get it out in the world, either by sending it off to some place that might publish it or just putting it up, who knows what, but to get it out there so that... Um, I mean, because it really, it, the, the whole book, Best Effort, is, is revolving around the ideas that the T2 Tile project is working on, uh, uh, but cut loose from reality. <laughs> you know, just being able to put on that magic sauce of, you know, other folks worked on this and solved all the problems between here and there. Uh, uh, so I, the key that I got myself to say was that this is from Stranger, Her Stranger Horizons, Strange Horizons, uh, um, that that takes uh, science fiction short stories under 5,000 words preferred. The After I did the cutout of just chapter two, it was over 10,000. So now for the last month, well, for the end, last few weeks of November, and also for the past two weeks, I've been doing this. I've been trying to make the thing go down. A and I had a, a, a quick spurt uh, uh, early on, and then I had a quick spurt like last night, you know. <laughs> It's unbelievable. Uh, this whole T Tuesday update thing is absolutely the revenge of students against the uh, meet Dip Professor Dave. Because, <laughs> you know, I was always pretty much of a hard ass. Well, I mean, I had policies about stuff being late and so on and so forth. But beyond that, beyond the policy that was built in, you know, the idea is you, know, you make the game be reasonably genuine, generous and then you stick to the rules. So, of course, now I'm just being like absolutely everybody else, you know, cramming before the deadline. This update is going to be extremely late. It's going to be handy for the folks in Greenwich Mean Time to watch uh, when it comes out, but perhaps not for anybody else. Uh, I'm still hoping that it will absolutely come out uh, during Mean Time T-Tuesday. So, um, I there is, you know, this was getting out a whole chunk. It, I, I've gotten, I don't know, 600, 700 words out, but I still feel all right about the enterprise because looking through what's coming up ahead, there's lots and lots of exposition where I was talking about the history of the future and all this kind of stuff, which was important for me to unfold because it's part of the backstory of the novel and it connects to other stuff uh, by the author Vaughn, Vaughn Joy Manon. Uh, um, but it doesn't need to be <laughs> short stories. So there's going to be other big chunks where a thousand words drop out and so forth. Uh, uh, then it's all the small, tiny little things where I actually indulge in some wordsmithing to try to make stuff uh, a little bit tighter to get away with uh, one sentence instead of three and so forth. So that's okay. And I feel like I can actually do it when my brain is pickled uh, from trying to code. I mean, you know, the older I get, you know, I had a birthday last month. I have now reached my final power of two. So uh, I can still program. <laughs> I can't program as good as I used to. I can't program as good as I wish. Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, day by day, step by step, and in the meantime, uh, uh, do other things. And one of the things that I can do is I can squeeze words out of my short story. Uh, uh, so that's the fiction story. Uh, uh, Last time it was about my fears for debugging, and we had bugs that are all surrounding intertile events, because the idea of having an event that starts in one place but makes changes on a neighboring administrative zone, a neighboring zone of control, that's the key thing that allows an indefinitely scalable system to unfold. And so, you know, and it's surprising that there are bugs in the implementation. Uh, um, at the movable piece machine level, that's what I've been focusing on. Uh, but just by luck, uh, I ran, a, I, I managed to trigger a Linux kernel module LKM uh, bug while I was working on this stuff. So I'll show you a little bit what about that, and then talk about the uh, MFM level stuff. Uh, um, so, right, uh, um, I have gotten the 
MFM inner tile events so that a single tile works fine because there's no inner tile events. Uh, a single tile with a cable so that it connects to itself, a loopback cable so it thinks it's connected to a different uh, uh, tile but it's actually connected to itself. That seems to work fine. Uh, uh, a single tile connected to one other tile, that seems to work fine. So to actually trigger the bugs it requires a minimum of three tiles that are all talking to each other so that they can get out of whack in more complex ways that uh, you know I haven't covered all the cases. Uh, um, I tried a new thing that I thought, hey, maybe this would help me simplify debugging. Uh, take two tiles, but also use a loopback cable from one tile to the other. So this the, this white tile down here, it's the key master. Uh, it thinks it's connected northeast and northwest. Uh, this tile up here, which is my transit tile, that I, I take the common data manager that lands on that, and I move that tile over to the grid, and I let it... Oh, speaking of which, uh, one second here. Uh -oh. yeah, I was trying to do an experiment. <coughs> I meant to do that when we actually started up. I forgot. We'll come back in and check on that uh, uh, at the end of the video. We'll see if it's actually made any progress. I'm not sure whether... Uh, well, you'll see. Uh, uh, <clears throat> So, but the point is here, even though there's only two tiles, uh, there are adjacent connections, northeast and northwest, southeast and southwest, so I thought maybe that would trigger some of these bugs that I'm seeing out in the whole grid that have been rather hard to capture. Uh, uh, I did not see any MFM bugs uh, doing this, but I did see, uh, there's another picture, oh yeah, and in particular, you see, uh, I, 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 loosed, I set loose a seed two, that's the splits at the end of the universe atom that just bounces around and when it reaches a state where it can't uh, advance, it picks another random direction and maybe it also splits itself. So it zooms across whatever, zoom, <laughs> and and then sometimes it duplicates. And other things being equal, it will gradually fill the universe up with more copies of itself. And this is what we see going on here. Now, seed 2, that's what this is, seed 2, uh, um, <clears throat> in the grid, in the power zone and a half that I have behind me, uh, uh, once that we, we very rarely get anywhere near this dense, this white, because the bugs will kick in, the synchronization, the intertile event bugs will kick in, and the M either the MFM or the entire tile uh, will restart, and it will wipe out uh, a bunch of the C2, will knock them back. Uh, that wasn't happening here, and it was getting very crowded in there, but what I saw was this. Uh, I had a, a serial cable plugged into the transfer tile, and uh, so log messages were spewing by, and the thing blew up. It rebooted. Uh, and I had terrible time in the past, as I mentioned before, that when I was having Linux kernel panics, at least in some cases, the disk wasn't getting synchronized properly so that when I came back up again, I did not see there was a hole in the log file where the information about what had happened tended to be. So here I had it sitting in the scrollback buffer of the terminal em emulator I was using, and I found this. Illegal standard local packet, blah, 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 and kernel bug at blah, blah, blah. I see, you know, line number and file and line number. Yes. So, uh, ITC packet .c line 344, oh, there it is. And sure enough, uh, ITC .c line 344 is a bug on, uh, a call which in, uh, Linux kernel land is a, it's a macro, it's a special instruction, uh, that says if this condition is true, then there's a bug blow up. And in this particular case, I said bug if, if one is true. And one is always true. And that was because I was in an if that was not supposed to be possible. So in this particular case, we're, we're getting ready to ship data out from one tile to the other tiles, and we're asking, does anybody have stuff that needs to be shipped? And first we ask the overall FIFO, the waiting line uh, of stuff that's bound to go out. We say, is there anything on the line at all? If the answer is zero, then okay, nothing to do. If there is something on the list, then we ask for how long is the first packet? The first, because packets can be anywhere from one byte to 255 bytes long, so we ask how long the first packet is. And it's never supposed to be zero. And it was being zero. So that's what was happening. We were getting a bunch of information printed out and uh, 
then uh, we were we were dying because we didn't know what the heck to do about it. Still don't know what to do about it. Uh, but the fact that we had that illegal standard local packet before the uh, uh, before the bug message said that maybe that's where things fell off the rails, and uh, the bug that comes later was a consequence of that illegal standard local packet. Uh, uh, so went to go find where that was, search for it uh, in the thing, and find it, and there it is. And uh, without going into all of the details. Details, what it boils down to is uh, um, the crews, the processors that are managing the communication between the tiles, like two separate additional processors on top, uh, along with the, the processor that's running the Linux thing and doing all that. Uh, um, they have a lot of, they send messages back and forth. A lot of those messages are the actual packets that have gone back and forth from neighboring tiles. But in addition, there are local packets that are just going from these little processors to the Linux processor and back and forth to give status information about which connections are open and closed and so forth. Those are called local packets. A and this says that if uh, a, a local packet uh, should always have a non-zero value in the first, the low five bits. Bits. And and there it was uh, the the local bit yeah so the first bit is a one saying there's it's it's meant for us entirely if the second bit is a one that's the local bit that means it's supposed to be local and and here it is and what we had the where what was the actual it was yeah e e zero so that's E is three one bits and a zero, zero is four zeros, so that's three one bits and five zero bits. And in fact, yes, we look it up, uh, and sure enough, uh, three one bits, and this is a wild card, and five zero bits, it's explicit. <laughs> illegal. So the Linux kernel module was getting mad about it. The question is, where did it come from? And at the moment, I don't know. It may be that it's coming from uh, an actual data error, an actual bit flip, an actual corruption. Uh, I looked through the, the Prue code, and I can't see any place where it would have been sending one of these things intentionally, but at least there's a clue. At least there's an example. At least there's one little piece of data. So that's what's happened on the Linux kernel module front, even though I wasn't going after it. Uh, um, on the MFM intertile event debugging, you know, all of this is, you know, just rich with irony. <laughs> I go on and on all day long about how uh, we need to get past determinism, we need to focus on redundant systems, and so forth. Uh, um, and then I face bugs, and I go, how the heck am I supposed to debug these things? The number one way that traditional computing, deterministic computing, fixes bugs is by making sure they're repeatable. If you have a problem, if you have some software problem, like an open source software, and you give a report to the developers, the first thing they're going to say is, how do I repeat this? And if they can't cause the bug uh, on their own control, then they're just not even going to bother with you. They <laughs> figure you're nuts. If you can't repeat it, you can't debug. That's the basic principle. So if we're giving up on determinism, if we're going to say you're not going to be able to repeat it, then what do you do? Yeah, and the answer is well understood outside the land of single application and little host debugging uh, circumstances. The answer is it's great. It fits on your back. It's great for a snack. It's log. Uh, uh, it's all about maintaining uh, histories of what actually happened so that when something goes wrong and you don't know when it's going to go wrong and you don't know why and you can't repeat it because you're interacting with the world. You're getting these inputs in hundreds of different directions. Of course you can't repeat it. And then so what you need to do is be able to figure out what happened after the horses left the barn so that you could close the door next time. And that's, of course, what we're doing here and it's all been about, we've had several uh, stages of doing various kinds of log files. We did them at the Linux kernel level, as you just saw, and uh, we've been doing them at the MFM level. Uh, orig oh, originally, a few weeks ago, it was the case that... Uh, um, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, it was the case that uh, I was writing logs out to disk uh, on a regular basis, and then when they got too many of them, I would delete the old ones uh, um, so that, you know, if the thing crashed, whatever it was, then the most recent logs would be on the disk. And that was blowing up. It was it was 
stressing the little flash drives that are built into these uh, beagle bone boards or something like that. It was causing corruption. So now I'm keeping the log file in memory, a, a big, big rolling buffer of a megabyte of the most recent events, two megabytes of the most recent events, and throwing away the previous megabyte when I overflow. And now when there's a trigger event of some sort, then I take the one to two megabytes of trace data that's sitting in memory, the most recent stuff, and I push it out to disk then. And in particular, I do it when there is an unexpected condition that isn't caught anywhere else. Uh, sometimes when things go wrong, people are expecting high, people up in the, uh, in the call stack, uh, people that ask stuff to be done, they're prepared to deal with certain failures. But if a failure reaches all, to way, all the way to the top, we get an unexpected exit, and that is with the trigger that I'm using to say, okay, push the logs out to disk. But even that is not enough, because an intertile event involves more than one tile. There's more than one set of logs. There's more than one CPU with logs and sitting in memory and so forth. So now what I actually got working in the last two weeks is when an unexpected exit is in the process of occurring. We failed all the way back up to the top and we're going, what are we doing here? Uh, uh, in addition to pushing our own in-memory logs to disk, we send a flash traffic message to all of our immediate neighbors saying, please dump your logs to your disk as well. And the, that flash traffic message includes a random tag, a 32-bit tag, that uh, we're going to use later to figure out, okay, the, the, all of these files are all, probably all part of the same event. We should try to get them all onto one tile and weave them together. And that's what I was developing for most of the last week. This, what we're looking at here, um, uh, there we go. Come on. There we go. Uh, um, this is the development of the trace menu, which is, you know, a new menu that didn't exist two weeks ago that is meant to provide access to the stored, the, the trace files that have been pushed onto the disk, which once again also have to clean up after themselves so that it doesn't use up more than a certain amount of disk. And at the moment we're saying you can keep 10 log files and the oldest ones are automatically removed when you run out. Uh, um, so we can we wanted to scroll up and down. I, this is when I was just developing and I thought I would take some pictures. There was actually a bunch of much stupider looking ones of this, but I didn't think about taking pictures of it at first. Here I was just filling up the text area so I could see how many characters, rows and columns I had to work with. Uh, now I was filling them up with what was going to be tag information about a specific tag. This is going to be the 32-bit tag. Uh, uh, this was going to be the X and Y offset of where the uh, original event took place place because we're going to dump these logs even if we're on a neighboring tile when someone tells us to dump the logs then the offset those two numbers would tell us where the uh, command to dump came from r00 was telling how far apart how far out it was and the s was going to be the sequence number that was going to tell us the order that all happened uh, here we've now started to get it more populated trying to get the size of each of the dump files in there we've got some actual random tags uh, uh, messing around with the layout uh, trying to buy a few more pixels, uh, uh, getting a, a new uh, button uh, uh, here that we can actually click and cause it to do the memory dump, uh, and now we, we couldn't see it before. Now we've got this 1DC random tag at the end. It's a 235-byte trace file because I just started this thing up for the test, uh, um, and on and on and on. Uh, um, once we re we're going to request the neighbors to go pick up a thing and bring it all to us, uh, uh, so there was going to be a confirm button. I just created the button at first, got that working, uh, uh, got put the uh, the tag file that we were going to request on it. It didn't actually fit. Had to shrink the font. Da 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 da. Days go by. Uh, um, and eventually, I actually sent it out. This uh, this RFP means uh, it actually received a flash flash packet from the Northeast. It was of type MFM get log. That's the new uh, flash traffic message. And then how did we handle it? We handle it by saying implement the stuff. So that <laughs> is where we're currently at. Uh, um, there's a bunch of other stuff. Uh, at the end of the log files now, we can actually have stuff that says where a failure occurred. Occurred. I'm very proud of this. It hasn't existed since the beginning 
with uh, uh, the T2 tile project. Now we have actual stack dumps, uh, not just in GDB, the debugger, but permanently out in the log file. And not only that, uh, they're actually in readable C++ names. They've been what's called demangled. Uh, for folks that know C++, if you know what I'm talking about, I sympathize. Uh, uh, but I finally, you know, did the Googling and find the code sample. <laughs> so forth to figure out how to demangle this and this has already been helpful uh, um, so <clears throat> I took all of that, I wrapped it up, I made new CDMD files for MFM with all those changes for the trace menu and for the T212 infrastructure package as well. I put them in my transfer tile, that's this guy right here, and I took them over to the main grid and I let it start to spread. Uh, uh, so now like T212, the infrastructure file is at, uh, going, the MFM file uh, is much bigger so it takes longer and it's starting to spread. You know, I, I'm always rushing on to the next thing, the next thing, and I don't spend a whole lot of time really appreciating, you know, for you know, getting CDM working was a big deal uh, this past year. Uh, this is the second major rewrite of it, uh, where now it's all pipelined and uh, automatically restarts after uh, if the CDM goes down or the entire tile reboots and now it just works so <laughs> alright you know there, there is progress even if I'm looking forward end of the year so uh, uh, it, it spreads through it eventually it, it reaches the other corner and they're starting to build up their stuff, and uh, if it all flows there, I, you know, there's the second guy coming in, and I figured, you know, uh, that that was one power zone, 16 tiles, and I figured I would turn on the, the half power zone that I have next to it as well, and what the heck, uh, uh, so that booted up um, as well, and again, this was all happening while the files were still moving on the other side, everything was fine, uh, um, and and then there it was, and it's really it's really kind of nice. I, I, I really really like, you know, when you see one of these video walls, the entire wall does this stuff in a perfect sync because there's a global clock. Uh, here, these, it's sort of in sync, but it's not completely. Things go at slightly different times. You know, one guy goes a little bit earlier than everybody else comes in. Uh, uh, it's like a marching band that's not absolutely perfect like every marching band isn't, uh, uh, so that synchrony is something that you aspire to locally rather than something which is enforced by the architecture. <sighs> the stuff comes in, eventually uh, T212, since it's only 2 meg, it, uh, finishes first and CDM automatically restarts, uh, um, so MFM sees the CDM, the Common Data Manager, as being down for a few minutes while it's coming back up again. Uh, yeah, right, and did we see this? Yeah. The CDM had been up for two days and 22 hours continuously uh, uh, at the time it got the new version, and now it's been up for eight seconds, uh, um, and it just picks right up. It was 59% of the MFM distribution. Uh, it actually, in this particular case, it took almost a minute and a half before it actually managed to start going again, because it is randomized, and it's not optimized for a magic efficiency. It's optimized for no matter what, things will start to work eventually. Yeah, and and then off it goes, and uh, it came in. It, it it loaded up everybody else. Once MFM started finishing, and and that package got installed, MFM uh, rebooted, re restarted itself automatically uh, as well, and there we are, uh, uh, like that. Uh, so at the end, I and here the the trace button. This is the menu that didn't actually exist uh, two weeks ago. Uh, this is to uh, tell everybody in the grid, you know, show the trace menu, send it to the grid, send it out to a radius of eight and tile coordinates, and do it, and it works. Uh, um, so here it is, uh, uh, the the trace menu that we saw on the grid with no trace files anywhere because it's brand new. Uh, uh, the mechanism to produce trace files uh, didn't exist, wasn't enabled until just the last day or two. So, uh, here's the demo. Uh, uh, what uh, you saw me do just a couple of minutes ago was, let's see where we're Uh, um, 
what I did was I uh, can we see that at all? Not so good. Uh, it's all right. Oh, look at that. See, we're having failures all over the place. And this is due to the cascading failures that I've mentioned before about when one tile sees a problem. Now, if everything works and all day long, the reason this Tuesday <laughs> is so late is because it hasn't been working. But now we're going to find out. I'm going to bring up the trace menu again, and we will see if there are any trace dump files in any of these things, which based on what we're seeing here, if if it's possible for folks to see it, not sure. Let's just take a look. All right. Grid command display to the grid trace. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, these guys keep going back to the sites menu because actually, let me uh, let me shoot some video with my phone as well. So in case it's completely, uh, um, uh, invisible on the main camera, we'll be able to see what's going on here. Uh, um, so right, these guys are, are getting wiped out. So down here, there's there's just one little trace. And, ooh, 5CF, 5CF, look at that. So the shared tag uh, thing is working. This is all the first time that it's actually worked. So uh, so that's nice. Uh, um, I'm just going to let these guys go crazy. Uh, um, and that's where we are at. That That is the demo. Uh, uh, the next update will be Tuesday, January 5th, 2021. Uh, uh, our goal is to have intertile events, MFM level intertile events, caught and isolated. I want to be able to tell you a story about at least one MFM intertile bug that may or may not be fixed, but it's been found and it's been diagnosed. Have a happy, merry new year as best as you can. Stay safe. Stay the right amount of sane. I hope to see you next time.